everyone. Welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda. Today I am in my garden. I am about to plant some seedlings in four raised beds. And so I'm going to be showing you how you can grow your own food in your raised beds. So let's get started. This is what the first raised bed is looking like that I'm going to be planting in. And as I told you all, I put my drip irrigation into these beds, but later I found out that there are easier ways to do it. I did put this in the, this way so that I would be able to have a turnoff valve. And this turnoff valve will allow me to turn my water supply off to this bed if I am not having to use this bed. So what I'm going to be doing, and see y'all, there was a spider right there. I don't know what type of spider that is. Looks like a wolf spider. But it was right there and I did not see it. That's why it's best to have gloved hands. It's best to have your gloves on when you are out here because I did not see that spider. It was on that um, tubing. And I was my finger was right there beside him. It would have been the same if it had been a poisonous spider. So you have to wear your gloves. I got my gloves in my hand, but I am having to uh, turn my camera on and off and I cannot turn my camera on and off when I have my gloves on. So you just have to uh, be aware of these things when you're in the garden. That those that one moment that you have that glove off, you could put yourself in danger. But I am going to be, uh, there are still some weeds that are around this bed. I, I'm simply gonna pull these weeds out of this bed and I'm going to pop some plants in here. But what I want to talk to you all about is using your space as wisely as you possibly can. And there is a method called the square foot method. And the square foot method teaches us to use a square foot to plant your plants. And depending on which plants you are planting, that is what you will, that is how you will decide how many plants or how many seeds you would put in a particular area. So I would just uh, say, for instance, if I were going to use the square foot method, uh, which I, uh, most of the time I do not, but this is just if you have a very, very small space and you are trying to uh, use it uh, the best that you can. I have enough space that I don't have to use that square foot method and I don't really like the way my plants look once I put them in the square foot method. So as I said, I won't be using the method, but if you were having to use that method, what you would do is they have these uh, tools that you can use. I don't, uh, I don't use, I've never used the tool. Uh, the main reason I haven't used the tool because for me it was too expensive and I have other things that I have. I could use a ruler and I can say, I'm gonna go 12 inches this way and then go 12 inches this way. And so that way I would have my square foot where this this uh, bed is not square anyway, but I could still estimate that I was using a square foot. So I would, hold on, let me take, I could take this tubing for instance, and I could say that uh, all the way across this bed is 24 inches, which it should be because I think it is two feet across. So if this were 24 inches and then I was using the square foot method, well, I would come half of, I would come down half of this. And so since this is not square anyway, I would say that this would be my, uh, my measurement would be like this. I know that is not the best way to do it, uh, to show you all, but I hope that you all understand. This would, I would use these two, close to squares as it is. And I will say, this is the area that I am going to plant in. Well, if I were planting broccoli, I could only get one broccoli here or one cabbage. I've seen it say more, but I would only put one broccoli or one cabbage. So if I was going to plant broccoli and cabbage, I would plant a broccoli here and a cabbage here. That still probably would not be enough space but I would be able to get a pretty large broccoli and a reasonable head of cabbage so that is how you use a square foot method then if you were planting something like carrots you might say well I can get 12 carrots so you would go want to go uh, I think they say 16 for the carrot but since my square is not that good I would say 12 and I would put uh I could do four rows of three or three rows of four and I plant my seeds like that and that way I would have my 12 
carrots in this space. And also, if you were, you could do uh, something like Swiss chard over here. You could say, well, I'm going to put four Swiss chard over on this side. So that is, the, and then you still would have all of this other space to make some more square foot plantings. And then you would be able to get more food into this row. So I just wanted to show you all that just in case someone is new trying to figure out how to grow their food for the very first time and this would be an option this is a four foot by two foot uh, raised bed this raised bed was very inexpensive it may have cost i probably i think i bought them together and i bought more about like two at a time and they probably ran me something like thirty dollars something like that so I've had them for a couple of years. Some of them have had one year, some of them have had two. But um, they are still pretty reasonable. So if you had enough room to put a couple of these and you know start your garden, and then you were breaking it off into square feet, so you would uh, into uh, yeah square foot doing square foot planting, you would not have to say, well, I just got this bed full of of um, I'm gonna have this bed full of mustard green. You don't have to have this bed full of mustard greens. You could have uh, six different items in this one bed if you use that square foot method. So I just wanted to show you all that and then I'm going to go ahead and fill this bed. And I'm not gonna use the square foot method. I'm just gonna fill this bed full of some stuff as far as I can fill it. Still, uh, some, somewhat using the square foot method because I'm not going to overcrowd this bed. I want to make sure I have room enough for a pretty large cabbage if I want to plant cabbage. I want to have room for my uh, Brussels sprout. And that's what I'm going to be planting in this bed, Brussels sprouts and broccoli. And there may be, I, I think i got some cabbages over there that I'm ready to put in. But we're getting ready. Supposedly going to have some rain. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to add some more soil. To this bed i have some soil right here that is in one of these five gallon buckets uh oh that does not look good Does not look the best. Okay, so I'm gonna work this soil in. Okay, so now that I got this soil worked up, I'm going to add some of uh, I'm going to add some blood meal. And then I'm going to start popping in some of my seedlings. First one I'm putting in is Swiss chard.
This is some of the bright light Swiss chard. I'll put it right next to it. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add some purple sprout and broccoli. Some celery. Drop in a red cabbage. A broccoli Romanesca. Let's see if we got Brussels sprout in here. I think it's a purple Brussels sprout. A red Reuben Brussels sprout. We're gonna put it right here at the front. A few carrots were left in this bed. And some blood meal. Blood meal is gonna supply this bed with nitrogen that it needs to grow the green leafy vegetables that we're planting. over my bag, but I didn't waste any. It lets me know I better be more careful with this blood meal. Okay, so I'm put it right there. And now I'm going to figure out which vegetables we're going to pop into this bed. Okay, 
Okay, so we got a tray of seedlings right here. We just gonna pop in whatever we have right here. This one is bright light Swiss chard. Hey, chicken over here eating a plant. Get out of there. So I see I'm gonna have to go ahead and cover these up. Get out of there, get out, get out, get out. Hey, get out of there those. Get back, get back, get back. Okay, so, cause I see that this is the way this is gonna work. I'm gonna have to go ahead and cover immediately cover my plants because she didn't jump in the bed. Get away from those plants. And she know she know better because she was leaving. She when she saw me coming, she left. I thought I was gonna water them in when I finished, but I think I better water them in now. At least I need to cover them up now. Okay, so I had to go and get some of my hoops. I'm gonna see if I can get by with putting two hoops in each of these beds. ahead and get my netting and put over the bed. I got my clamps that I needed to uh, put on the bed. I went ahead and ordered some more of those since I was running low on my clamps. So that should get us through this fall season and winter season because I also use those clamps to uh, put my frost protection on. Okay, so what I plan to do with this is I plan to cut it in half and use it over two beds. It's not gonna work for three beds, but it will work for two. One close to the bottom on this side. The same one right, same right there. My 
we have to clamp one to that. And get another one or two. So I can clamp them to the other side at the bottom. Now we can move to the next bed. And I have got to keep my chickens out of here eating these plants. So they over there now, they're not even worried about it right now. But y'all, in my previous video, I was trying to get those chickens to eat a hairy worm. It was a white hairy worm that came off of the Jamaican sorrel that I harvested yesterday. And those chickens refused to eat that hairy worm. I went inside and I Googled, why will my chickens not eat a white hairy worm? And it says that worms are okay. It is okay for chickens to have worms as long as the worms are smooth. But hairy worms could be toxic or even poisonous. The chicken. So y'all, those chickens knew what they were doing. They was, they were like, lady, gone with the worm. We're not eating that. She tried to do poison us. So I am so happy that they did not eat it because I feel so bad because I was, I was insisting. This bed has my horseradish. This is one of those uh, whiskey barrel halves and it has the horseradish in it. I know you have not seen this horseradish probably since last spring but this is where it has been over here hidden because as you know all of this was covered by watermelon uh vines and uh cucumber vines so you could not see it but this is where it has been and it is looking pretty good it needs to get uh well it's been getting water because it is on the drip irrigation system so i um yeah that is why it is still surviving because it has been getting some water but now it is uh I'm, I'm i'm not gonna have to cover anything because chickens don't eat it so we're gonna move on to this next bit all Okay, so as I start watering these plants in this bed, these hoops are not working for me. Just having one on each end, I am going to have to have one in the middle. I was just trying to save hoops, but I'm going to have to put one in the middle also. And it's also not working that well with me cutting this fabric. The fabric, it seems to not be long enough, especially on this one. It's okay on the other ones, but on this one, I'm going to go ahead and put this other big piece of fabric on. And then I'll just save this one for one of my beds that I have over there that is on a small one. I think it's a tote that I have over there that I'll be able to put that on. Put these gloves back on because I don't want them to bite me. I don't think I'll have to be wasting time cutting netting anymore because that just was not working. And I might end up leaving it hanging over the side because uh, I think that would keep things from getting in there more than trying to drape it inside of the bed. I think having it like this, just let it hang down, I think it's gonna be better. 
I am going to try this. And then I'm going to put these clamps in it. Still put a clamp on each one of these. Because as I was doing it that way, I was trying to put those clamps at the bottom. But this way, I can still have the clamp. I can just clamp these to these containers like this to my raised bed. Yeah, I think that's going to work a whole lot better. And then if something decides to get in there, see, well, they got to try to figure out. Either They can tear it. You know, the chickens can tear it. I know that after they pick at it so much, they can end up tearing a hole in it. But that's maybe by the time that they get that hole torn in it, they will have given, gotten tired and just decided to move on. Same thing with rabbits. Keep them out. Then that, that uh, moth, that uh, cabbage moth, going to have more trouble trying to figure out how to get underneath here and get in then you know so it might not look the best hanging over the sides like this but i think it's going to be more effective so that's what we're you know we want to put it on there and use it for what it is supposed to be used for i am not going to try to cut these in half to make them go make them stretch i'm just going to go ahead and hang them over the sides at the length that they came in y'all have enjoyed this video today and that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already subscribed and hit the notification bell to be notified when i upload a new video and as always thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye